you must learn what to fear and what not to fear. Tolerance of intolerance is cowardice. However, some things must be said, and there are times when silence becomes an accomplice to injustice. I would like to be judged on the validity of my arguments, not as a victim. I cannot emphasize enough how wrong-headed this is. Withholding criticism and ignoring differences are racism in its purest form. Yet these cultural experts fail to notice that, through their anxious avoidance of criticizing non-Western countries, they trap the people who represent these countries in a state of backwardness. The experts may have the best of intentions, but as we all know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Reality is not easy, but all this make-believe doesn't make it easier. It takes a long time to dissolve the bars of a mental cage. As a reader, I could put on someone else's shoes and live through his adventures, borrow his individuality, and make choices that I didn't have at home. Bear true witness, even if it is against yourselves, your parents, or your family. I would rather clean than beg. Most of all, I think it was the novels that saved me from submission. I was young, but the first tiny, meek beginnings of my rebellion had already clicked into place. Multiculturalism should not mean that we tolerate another culture's intolerance. But without doubts, without a standpoint reached through questionings, human beings can't acquire knowledge. This wasn't just a band of frustrated Egyptian architects in Hamburg. It was much bigger than that and had nothing to do with frustration. It was about belief. In short, the liberation of the individual conscious from hierarchical and priestly authority opened up space for critical thinking in every field of human activity. Hard as it may be for many Western academics to believe, when people commit violent acts in the name of religion, they are not trying somehow to dignify their underlying socioeconomic or political grievances. I didn't like the endless gossiping or the constant complaints that they were victims of external factors. Somalis never said sorry or I made a mistake or I don't know. They invented excuses. All these group strategies to avoid confronting reality depressed me. Reality is not easy, but all this make-believe doesn't make it easier. All scriptures contain contradictions, and the Quran is no exception. You who call yourself liberals must understand that it is your way of life that is under threat. Withdraw my right to speak freely and you jeopardize your own in the future. Ally yourself with the Elamists at your peril. Tolerate their intolerance at your peril. People in the West have learned not to examine the religions or cultures of minorities too critically for fear of being called racists. 
The rule of clerics is totalitarian. It means people can't choose. Humanity is varied, and we should celebrate that instead of suppressing it. Confronted with such flagrant acts of intolerance, such abuses of the freedom of speech, a free society must surely do more. For intolerance is the one thing a free society cannot afford to tolerate. I was learning that in these extremely civilized circles, conflicts is dealt with in a very ornate and hypercritical manner. The good times, when the rains came and made everything green, when streams of water suddenly raced through the dried riverbeds and there was milk and meat in abundance. She tried to teach us how that led to decadence, how when the grass grows green, herders become lazy and children grow fat. The right to think, to speak, and to write in freedom and without fear is ultimately a more sacred thing than any religion. I may no longer submit. It is possible to free oneself, to adapt one's faith, to examine it critically, and to think about the degree to which that faith is itself at the root of oppression. The argument in this book is that religious doctrines matter and are in need of reform. I have faith, but I have faith in human reason. You have to deal with the world as it is and not as you want it to be. Before the Brotherhood came, you could see everyone's arms and legs. We never used to notice, but now that women are covering so much, all I can think about is those round calves and silky arms and the hair smelling of coconut. I never used to think about the neck before, but ooh, a neck is so sexy now. In no other modern religion is descent still a crime, punishable by death. All they could do was take us to the bazaar to buy essentials. Here we were too transfixed to misbehave. There were lights and glitter and toys, toys everywhere, and stalls pungent with blood and spices the cackle of animals, and the plump promise of pastries. If you are a Muslim girl, you disappear until there is almost no you inside you. I can well remember how someone in my family lay sick or dying, like my aunt when she contracted breast cancer. The Quran was chanted by her bedside in the belief that its words alone could cure the patient. Analogies with Christian prayer are misleading because the reciter of the Quran is voicing God's words, not appealing to God for intercession. Saudi women had no faces. We pulled away and ran to the black shapes. We stared up at them, trying to make out where their eyes could be. One raised her hand, gloved in black, and we shrieked. They have hands? We pulled faces at her. We were truly awful. But what we were seeing was so alien, so sinister, that we were trying to tame it, make it less awful. And what these Saudi women saw, of course, was little black kids acting like baboons after. It even contains rules on what type of blows are permissible 
when a husband beats his wife. I was learning that in these extremely civilized circles, in a very ornate and hypocritical manner, If we do, in fact, support diversity, women's rights, and gay rights, then we cannot in good conscience give Islam a free pass on the grounds of multicultural sensitivity. And we need to say unambiguously to Muslims living in the West, if you want to live in our societies to share in their material benefits, then you need to accept that our freedoms are not optional. The rule of clerics is totalitarian. It means people can't choose. Humanity is varied, and we should celebrate that instead of suppressing it. You could see her face because she was Somali. Saudi women had no faces. <laughs>